Hi, I'm Kelly with Blue Water Photo, and today I want to take a quick look at the new CNC housing for the Sony A7 II cameras. This housing will work with the A7 II, the A7R2, and the A7S2, although we're still waiting on the update for the mode dial so that you'll be able to change modes on the R and S versions of the camera. Before we delve into the housing, let's take a quick look at the camera. The A7 II series builds upon the really popular A7 camera that Sony released last year. It's got a full frame sensor in a mirrorless body, which makes it really ideal for traveling because you get the high detail, excellent quality out of that full frame sensor with a slightly smaller camera body than you get in any of the high-end DSLR camera bodies. Also means smaller housing size too, which makes it easier to travel with. The A7 II has the same 24 megapixels. It's got improved autofocus. It's also got built-in in-body image stabilization, which makes it nicer than the A7. The R version has 42 megapixels instead of the original 36. It also has a 35 millimeter backlit sensor, which improves the low light capabilities of the camera, which is really great for underwater use, especially if you're shooting ambient light and for video. In addition, the new R2 offers 4K recording, and the S version also offers internal 4K recording, whereas with the original A7S, you could only do it with an external recorder attached to the camera. So overall, the new A7, R, S, and standard A7 II cameras are great improvements over the original, and they all work excellently underwater. If budget is not an option, I would definitely say to pick up the A7R2. It gives you the best of both worlds with the nice backlit sensor for low light capability, as well as the really high resolution so that you have so much detail and the ability to crop in on some of those macro shots if you don't quite nail the composition. Let's take a quick look at the CNC housing. This is a excellent housing overall. I've used it underwater and really enjoyed it. It's very simple, which is very common with CNC housing, so it's easy to use. Everything is placed just where you want it to. It's made out of machined aluminum. They do have a slightly smaller port opening than what you'll find in other housings like the Nauticam, so it means that some of the lenses you do have to put on from the front, which can be a little bit of a, of a pain, but I didn't actually have too much problems with it. It wasn't very bothersome, so I wouldn't say it's a huge negative. The controls are great. You've got molded grips, shutter levers, really excellent. You've got levers really easily accessible by your thumb or other fingers for controlling a lot of the custom buttons on the camera. Your dials for shutter speed and aperture are easy to use so you can control just about everything you need. On the back of the housing, they've got a nice dial here that makes it very easy to control the dial on the back of the camera. You've got buttons and other functions all within easy reach, and they're all nicely labeled so you know exactly what everything does. The housing does include the ability to use CNC's internal YS converter, which is probably the biggest selling point for me on this housing. Since the A7 II cameras do not include a pop-up flash, you have to use sync cords with this if you want to get any sort of flash, or um, fiber optic cables with some sort of flash trigger. The benefit to the CNC housing is that their internal flash trigger, which allows you to use the fiber optic cables here, also does TTL. I tested it when I was underwater, really found the TTL to be accurate and quick. The recycle speed is also just as quick as you'd get with uh, sync cords, since you're not using any internal camera flash. It's all based on external electronics. Really like that because it takes one extra step out of your photo process if you can put it on TTL. Worked great for macro, it worked great for a lot of wide angle shots, except for when I was shooting into the sun and really wanted to push, push the strobes as high as they'd go. Overall, I think that's excellent. Let's take a quick look inside the housing. So show you that. It's really easy to open. You just push down the two levers, slide it off. They've got these nice stainless steel clasps. They work really well. They rarely get stuck, which is really excellent. So you can see inside, there's not too much going on. They've got the really nice blue O-ring, makes it really easy to see if there's any hair or grit. They have a locking camera tray. Simply unlock it, the tray slides out. This is the connection for the internal TTL converter, which is right here. It's got a lighted control so you can tell what mode you're in. Easy to turn on and off from the back of the housing. Closing the housing is just as easy as opening it. Simply make sure your O-ring is clean and clear of any hair. Line up the back plate, slip the latches, click, and you're good to go. 
I really enjoyed this housing. I would definitely say it's something to consider if you're looking at an underwater housing for the CNC or for the Sony A7 II, A7R2, and A7S2 cameras. Despite the small port size, they do make adapters, so you can use all the DSLR ports in addition to their line of mirrorless ports. So you've got the ability to use just about any lens that you would want to use on the Sony underwater, no limitations. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call or shoot us an email. You can find all our information at our website, www.bluewaterphotostore.com. Thanks so much for watching.